care. I read somewhere where it said that cast all your cares upon him. But he careth for you, amen? Because he's a caring God. He cares about his people. Amen. Let's give the soldiers of Christ another hand. Yeah. Thank God for them as well. Amen. Amen. And thank God for all of you. Amen. 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 Being here because you could have been anywhere today, but we thank God that you're here now. Amen. 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 Giving our honor and praise to our Lord and Savior Jesus of Christ. We thank God for Pastor Ellis, the under shepherd of this great branch of Zion. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 Also, we thank God for the ministry of the staff, for all of the associate ministers. Amen. Amen. For the deacons, the deaconess, trustees. Amen. Amen. AV, Amen. ushers. Amen. Amen. Kids Church. Amen. 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 Well, we just thank God for being here. Yes, sir. Uh, also, thank God for my lovely wife. Amen. If the Lord says the same on Tuesday, June 12th, we will celebrate 31 years of marriage. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say, he is fine. It's the first time I ever oh, saw him. Oh, God is a God is a wonderful God. Amen. I had to go all the way to Germany to pick her up. And she's from she's from Virginia. And I'm from Alabama. God is a mighty God. Amen. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Amen. Amen. There's a word from the Lord. We're not going to keep it long. Amen. But there is a word from the Lord. Just pray with me just for a moment. God, the Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, God. We give you all the honor, praise, and glory for all the great things that you have done, that you are doing in our lives, that you will do in our lives, God. We thank you for all under the sound of my voice, God. It's preaching time. And you said, God, by the foolishness of preaching, shall they be saved. And the word, God, is what saves your people. Yes. Yes. We thank you, Lord God, for our visitors who are visiting for the very first time. Mm -hmm. And now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart all be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And all of God's people say amen. 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 And amen. amen. For those who have your Bibles, please stand just for a moment and turn to the 26th edition of Psalms. Psalms 26. When you get there, say amen. amen. Psalms 26. Everybody there? Amen. Now I'll be reading from the King James Version of the Bible, so you might have a different one out there, but it's all the Word of God. Amen? Amen. 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 Psalms 26. This is 26. This is a Psalm of David. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have also trust, I trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. Verse 2. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try me. Try my reins and my heart. For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in dissemblance. I have, I have hated the congregation of evildoers, and I will sit with the wicked. I will not, I will not sit with the wicked. Amen. Verse 6. I will wash mine hands in innocence, so I will compass thine altar, O Lord. And finally, verse 7. That I may publish with the, with the voice of thanksgiving and tell, and tell of all and tell of all thy wonderful, wondrous works. Amen? Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to read again verses two, verses one and two, because that's primarily where the word will come from today. The message will focus on verses one and two. But as, after reading verses one and two, when you go down to verse seven, you see why he, he says that I will publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of my wonderful work. Verse 1, judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. 
I have, I have also trusted in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. Examine me. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. Amen. Amen. I want to talk very briefly this morning from the subject. Focus it on verses 1 and 2. A self-examination. Beware of the I syndrome. A self-examination. Beware of the I, the letter I, syndrome. Amen? Amen? I praise God for Sister Rita Terry because this morning she gave her testimony this morning at 8 as well as at 11. And she said something profound. Everything she said was profound, but she said one thing. I just honed in on it. She said that when, when she, she put a number down on her promise form, and she said, how am I, That's right. how in the world am I going to do this? Well, yeah. And she said, that's why I got it wrong, because right. God didn't want her to do it. Yeah. God wanted to do it for her. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So we have to beware of the I syndrome. Amen. Yeah. It'll jump up on you sometime before you know it. Amen. Amen. Someone once said, I'm not sure it was a player or a coach, to Michael Jordan. Look, man, there's no I in team. And Michael Jordan, being the quick wit that he is, responded. He said, yeah, but there's a me in team. Hello. Some of y'all get that on the way. It's a little deep. Amen. Amen. In other words, Jordan was saying, try to have a team without me. Amen. One of the most difficult things in the world for anyone to do is do a solemn self-examination on him, him, or, him or herself. Amen. Amen. Self-examination is defined as a reflective examination. Amen. A reflective examination as of one's belief and motives. It is synonymous with the word introspective. Introspective, which means a reflection looking inward, not outward. I'm not talking about how much I weigh in how much my hair is curly and, and I'm 6'3 and 185 pounds of um, 36, 24, 36. I'm not talking about the outside. I'm talking about the inside. A solemn examination, reflective look inward and examination of one's thoughts and feelings. Why do I believe what I believe? Why do I do the things I do? Someone once said that, that, that in every person, in every individual, there, there are three persons or individuals. One is the person others think you are. Second one is the person that you think you are. And finally, the person that you really are. Amen, somebody. It requires an examination of oneself. What is your identity? What's your name? How many forms of Bob Smith are there? He's one way at home, he's one way at church, he's one way in Alabama, he's another way in Mississippi. Will the real Bob Smith stand up and be recognized? That's what God said. Will the people of God Stand the real people of God. Stand up and be recognized. I'm talking about a self-examination. Beware of the I syndrome. When taking a self-evaluation, you got to be honest with yourself now because you are the tester, you are the testee, and you're the great. Amen. When you're doing it yourself. However, my brothers and sisters, there is a standard by which all mankind will be judged and great. It's a standard by which all men will be examined. The standard just so happens to be the Word of God. Amen. The Word of God, that, that treasure of heavenly instruction and the supreme standard by which all human conduct, creed, and opinion should be tried. Should be. Amen. Meaning, Everything we do, everything we say, everything, every, every uh, organization, every conversation that I go into, 
ought to be about Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus should be back in that conversation. Mm -hmm. Folks should know who you are just by walking in the room that you just light up the place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I heard Paul tell Timothy, all scriptures given by inspiration mm -hmm. of God and his prophet for, for doctrine, for reproof, for instructions in righteousness that the man of God, that the woman of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That's 1 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Let's look at Psalms 26 for a moment. In this particular passage of Scripture, we find David summoning God to examine him. Think about that now. He, he's telling the Almighty God, who has all power in heaven and earth, to examine him, not on the outside, but he's looking at the inside. Called man looks at the outside, but God looks at the inside. David is quite confident in his request for God to examine him. He shows confidence. He must feel that he has all the right answers. You know how it was back in school? You took an exam and you, 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 you felt like you aced that exam. In your heart of heart, you felt like you aced it. I've been there one or two times. I felt like I aced that exam and I can't wait to get it back. Only to find out I didn't ace that exam. Amen. So I felt I found out it's one thing feeling as though you aced the exam. It's another thing actually acing the exam. Amen. So it is in life. God is grading you. He's grading me. He's grading every believer according to the word of God. And you don't want to go away thinking you aced it. You want to go away knowing that you aced it. And what David is doing, this is not, don't get it wrong now, this is not an expression of self-righteousness, but rather an honest conversation from, a, from, from an honest man. And biblical scholars can't agree with some say that, that David was being falsely accused in this psalms. That's why you, it's only you, he's telling God, not man, examine me, try me. Amen. The word examine and try here refer to the testing of metals. It tests metals back in that day to determine, amen, the value of the metal, the true value of the metal, and to remove the draw from the metal. Draws, D R O S S. Is the scum or unwanted material that forms on the surface of the molten metal. Mm. Amen. In other words, stuff that's not needed. Mm. And the way they tested metals back then, get this now, they heated the furnace seven times hotter than normal mm. and then poured it out in the hole. Mm. So now we know why the three Hebrew boys were oh, thrown into yes, the fire furnace and it was heated up seven times hotter than it normally is. Amen. Get this, their faith, not them, their faith had to be tested. For example, Peter said you can't get out of this thing because knowing this, that the trial of your faith must be tested just like gold tried in the fire. Amen. To burn away everything that's not needed. Heart and mind here in these verses refer to the kidneys and heart in the original language. The kidneys being the seat of emotion and the heart the place of moral decisions. Every, or you think and reason. The gray matter between your two ears. That's where God wants to dwell. Because as Pastor Tony Eric said, if, he, if God controls my mind, he controls my whole body. Amen. The, the, the position of the kidneys in the body makes them particularly inaccessible. And cutting up an animal for sacrifice, they're the last organs to be reduced. Consequently, they were a natural symbol for the hidden part of man. That part that we can't see. I can see your head. I can look into your eyes. I can, I can, they say you can look at body language, post out all this stuff, but who can look at the heart? Yeah. Only Jesus can look at the heart. So then David said, trust, he said, judge me, examine me, prove me, try me. Could you do that to God today? God, 
Test me. Prove me. Try me. Amen. You know, back in the day, you walk up on somebody, you get ready to Okay, try me. <laughs> try if you want. <laughs> and, and you better not be bluffing. Because <laughs> some folks will call your bluff, baby. Amen. So if you, if you tell Jesus to try me, better watch out. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Psalms 139, 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. David was motivated and controlled by God's love and God's truth. The Lord was faithful to his covenant, and David was faithful unto the Lord. My brother and sister, sometimes we don't hold up our end of the deal. We want God to hold up his end of the deal, but we won't hold up our end of the deal. Amen? But it doesn't work like that. Don't get me wrong, David wasn't perfect. He occasionally fell like we all do. Amen? The Bible says, I didn't say, Proverbs 24, 16. A just man falleth seven times. Seven times. But he rises up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Seven times. A just man. Philippians 4 and 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall do what? Keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Donald McPherson said we fall down. But we get back up again. How many times are you willing to get back up again after you fall down? Because this thing called life is going to knock you down. If you haven't been knocked down yet, keep living. Something is, is going, and that's just, that's just life. You don't have to be doing anything wrong to be knocked down. Amen. So how many times will you fall down? Are you willing to get back up again? Are you willing to get up off the mat? You, are you going to say, I can't take it anymore? Or are you going to tap out? Like you do in wrestling. Put a chokehold on the brother. Or beat him down. Kick him so many times. Hit him so many times that I tap out. That means I'm done. I, I can't take no more of this. In our lives, these trials and tribulations that come unannounced, unnoticed, amen, that come into our lives, knock you down one time, knock you down two times, knock you down three times, four times, five, six, seven. But I got to get back up again. I'm going to get back up again. I'm going to, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight till I can't fight no more, brother. Baby. I'm going to fight even if the fat lady begins to sing. I'm going to fight. And if she gets in my way, I'll fight her too. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. David wasn't, 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 but he was confident. He wasn't cocky. David represents a man who has been tried and tested by the circumstances of life. He, re he represents a man who has done some self-evaluation, self-examination. Listen to the words. Judge me. Examine me. Prove me. And notice David did not tell God to look at anybody else. He didn't say, oh Lord, judge Mike. Judge Nate. Judge June. No, he said, judge me. You, you in the courtroom all by yourself is you and Jesus. Johnny Cocker can't help you right here. No, mama can't help you with this one. Daddy can't help you with this one. Wife, husband can't help you with this one. You got to go to court in this one all by yourself. You and the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. He's conducted his own self-examination. He's avoiding what I call the proverbial eye syndrome. Hmm. The eye syndrome. When speaking of the eye syndrome, let me tell you what I'm talking about. The letter I is the most important letter in the alphabet in the 26 letters. Amen, somebody. Amen. I is the person you see in the mirror <laughs> with, before you lie down at night and when you get up in the morning. 
I is the person responsible for all, every action. I is the person responsible for every triumph and disaster that comes into your life. I is the person you are and I am when nobody is looking. I is the person who stands before God to give an account of what I did while I was in the body, whether, I, whether it was good or bad. In fact, the letter I is at the center of a lot of things. Amen? Amen. All right. Point number one. You're almost there. Amen? Amen? I is at the center of a lot of things. First of all, I is the center of sin, is at the center of sin. Yes, I am. It's right there in the middle. I'm looking at it, right? Right there. Right there. I is in the center of sin. Sin is a missing on a mark of God. Sin is a, is a deprived state of human nature in which itself is estranged from God, disconnected from God. Amen. A missing on the mark. A transgression of God's law, knowingly violating, knowingly violating God's law. We do it. We do it all the time. Amen. Stop sign in the neighborhood early in the morning. No cars around, dark. No police. I'm not. I might tap the bridge. Ain't nobody there. Amen. Ain't nobody looking. Can't nobody see me. See, that's who I am when nobody's around. I'm transgressing the law. But there is one that sees me. There's one that sees me. Adam, the original man, created in holiness by the law, under the law of his maker, but by voluntary transgression. Did what? He fell from that holy and happy state in consequence. So which? All mankind, you and I, we're all sinners. We got it from death. That Adam, sin nature, came all the way down to all of mankind. And, 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 and sin is a sinner, and you cannot do anything about it. It's I is in the center of sin. Let me define sin. Let me, according to the Bible. Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If that's not good, for, good enough for you, Galatians 3.22. But the scripture has concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Believe. No, sin costs you something, but eternal life is a gift. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6.23 Sin was a problem for David from the very, very beginning. It's a problem for you and I from the very beginning. Why? David said in Psalms 51 and 5, he said, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity. And in sin as I am, did my mother conceive me. Need another example? Sin is that which separates you and I from God. Isaiah 59 and 2 tells us, But your iniquities have separated you and your God, and your, that is, sin, have hid his face from you, and your God will not hear from you. God hates sin. He hates sin. But the word says, if I confess my sins, he's faithful, he's just to forgive me of my sins, and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. If I say I have no sin, I lie. Amen. And there ain't no truth in me. But sin is forgivable. Ephesians 1 and 7. In whom, Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. That's Ephesians 1 and 7. Point number two. Not only is God, not only I is the center of sin, I is the center of pride. Mm. It is right there. P R I D. Hope you're getting this now. Talk about I. Self examination. Beware of the I syndrome. Pride is defined as the, the quality 
or state of being proud. Pride, pride destroys humility and builds a wall between you and me and God. But pride is the last thing to depart, before, depart you before you receive some help. Pride doesn't go away easily. It holds on for dear life. God doesn't like pride. He prefers humility. The Bible says in Proverbs 16 and 18, pride goeth before destruction. Better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Pharaoh's pride, and Pastor preached on this this morning, I thought it was very interesting. Pharaoh's pride destroyed him. Why? Because he said, who is the Lord that I shall obey him? Let Israel go. I know not the Lord. Neither will I let Israel go. Pride. Pride almost cost Naaman his life. Naaman, the captain of the host of the, of the king of Syria in 2 Kings 5 and 1. Naaman was a, a big dog. Amen. And Elijah was a messenger of God. And he heard about Elijah had the ability to remove disease. So Naaman called for Elijah to come see him to help him out because he had leprosy. And Elijah said, I'm not going. So he sent somebody down to messengers and said, okay, you tell, go down and tell Naaman to go and wash himself in the Jordan seven times. Name is a big dog. He got a lot of pride. So I'm not going down there. First of all, the guy didn't even come to see me in person. He had a lot of pride. But guess what? In the final analysis, he went and did what Elijah told him to do. Amen? Amen. That's in 2 Kings, the fifth chapter, verse 10 through 11 and verse 14. Let me give you, let me give you an illustration. Amen. And the question is, what healing, what blessing, what miracle is just beyond your reach if your pride wasn't in the way? What healing, what blessing, what miracle is just, uh, uh, I, I get it back. You know, you reach for something, you almost, you can't get there because pride is holding you back. Marriages in a divorce because of pride. Neither one of us, amen, wants to be the first to say it. <laughs> I couldn't resist. It was right there, mate. I couldn't resist. Amen. I'll tell you what, if my wife was trying to leave me, I'd be begging. I'd be singing some ain't too proud to beg. Sweet baby. in the Aquaquan River seven times and you'll be clean. Matter of fact, your skin will be like a baby is what the word says. But, but you know what? Man, I ain't going out in the first bar. Why didn't pastor come to sell? Oh, I'm not worthy enough? I don't have enough juice in the church for my pastor to come and check about me? And then you, you, you lose that pride and you finally go down to the Aquaquan and you do what the man of God told you to do, right. obedience. Right. And you are made whole. 
Now that I said all to say that God recognizes and rewards obedience. Obedience is always better than sacrifice. Amen. Amen. So not only is I the sinner of sin and I is the sinner of pride, but thank God Almighty. I is also the sinner of Satan. Yeah, anyway. S-A-V-I-O. Right in the center. The Savior. Now, Webster's Dictionary defines Savior as one of the one that saves from danger or destruction. I'm saying that could be a fireman. Yeah. That could be a policeman. Am I right? But then it's that one who brings salvation. O only one can bring salvation. So I is not the center of the word Savior. I is the center of the word, not only the center of the word Savior, but I is the center of our salvation. Which rests in Jesus. He is the center of my joy. Amen. Amen. The psalmist said, and in, in him, and him only do we live and move and have our being. Amen. It is him and him alone do we live and have our being. John 10, 10. I'm sorry, Acts 17, 28. And in him alone do we have life, and we have it more abundant. That's John 10, 10. Savior. Who is our Savior? Isaiah 46, 49 and 26 said, I, the Lord, am thy Savior, and thy Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Ephesians 5, 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. Ephesians 5, 23. We trust in the living God who is our savior of all men, especially of those that believe. 1 Timothy 4 and 10. Look into that blessed hope and the glorious appearance of the great God, our savior, Jesus the Christ. Titus 2 and 13. Jesus is everybody's Savior based on what he did on the cross. You can take it or leave it, but he did it for all mankind. The way we make him our, our Lord is that we have to release our entire being to him. We must look and have a solemn self-examination of one's entire being. Amen. And we want to make sure that Jesus doesn't, doesn't pass us by. Amen. Amen. There, there's an old spirit that goes what? Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, please don't pass me by. Amen. There you have it, my brothers and sisters. The letter I is the center of sin. It is also the center of pride. But thanks be to God, it is the center of Satan. The letter I is also the center of the word child, as in children of God. Amen? Amen. And in the word Christian, there are two eyes. I believe one of the eyes is for you, and the other one is for me, because we are all part of this great family. <laughs> Amen? Right. I believe that, that, that we are part of God's grace and mercy. That, and David recognized he was free as a result of God's grace and mercy. He was aware of the I syndrome of his past. See, I know what I did in the past. Why? I was there. <laughs> so I don't need you to tell me. Because I know. Because I was there. Amen. But it's not about me. It's all about God. Amen. My brothers and sisters, if you go through life thinking only about yourself, you are a victim of the I syndrome. Yeah. I did this. I got a promotion. I got a car. I got a house. When we all be saying, I thank God that I got a promotion. I thank God. I thank God for all that he has given me and blessed me with. Amen. And the word, the last word I'll leave you with is the word Christ. Why this word? The I is not the sinner. No, it's not. But there's an I in Christ, and there's a Christ in me. Amen. He lives because he lives 
in me. Right. Amen. Amen. Follow my brothers and sisters. Psalms 26 and 1. That word judge, the first word in verse, in verse number 1. J-U-D is the word vindicate. V-I-N-D-I-C-A-T-E. And guess what? The I is in the center. Vindicate. Vindicate means free from charge or wrongdoing. Vindicate is synonymous with related words such as absolve, acquit, clear, exonerate. Vindicate are the words like this. Atone, discharge, liberate, redeem, unburden, forgive, and depart. The president doing a lot of pardon, pardon these days. Right? Yeah, he has a president. He's a president. He can do that. He can do whatever he wants because the power of the presidency allows him to do that. But only one can pardon sin. Yeah. Amen. And even the president has to be part of that. Yeah. Yeah. And if a person is in prison and the president says, I'm going to pardon your sin, they get out immediately. They don't, they don't wait. They get out immediately. What you saying, preacher? When you and I confess our sins to God, oh, yes. you get your good out of jail free card. Oh, yes. Amen. So, if you're gonna have an eye syndrome, amen. If you really just have to have an eye syndrome, let me give one to you. Say things like, "In Christ, I am acquitted." In Christ, I am exonerated. In Christ, I am liberated. In Christ, I am redeemed.